time for another book tag video hey everyone it's Lois here welcome back to another video welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here thank you for joining me today and in today's video I'm going to be doing the moody book tag So I've just finished taking some photos for Bookstagram and I thought whilst I'm all made up I might as well film this video as well. Now don't worry I know that my cleavage may be annoying you or whatever we were talking I'm trying to figure that out. So I'm gonna go and change and then we'll resume with the rest of the video. Okay right so now that this video is less certificate 18 let's get on with these questions. It's been a while since I've done a book tag um, and I do really like making these types of videos even though I don't make them often so I'm looking forward to uh, getting through these questions. There's 11 in total and it's really simple it's just going to be me talking a little bit about my reading habits but also before we get into these questions final prerequisite I have to thank Steph from coffee over apples for tagging me to participate in this tag thank you very much i'm sure you're all following her because she's a lovely amazing human who makes fantastic content but just in case you're not i'll link her channel down below as well as the original creator for this tag brit from slanted spines please do go check out their channel as well it's also linked in the description box down below Question number one is do you consider yourself to be a mood reader and to that I would absolutely say yes I am. I'm definitely the type of reader that will pick up a book and just read it because I fancy reading that book at that particular time. I do like TBRs, having that structure I find it helps my reading but I'm not the best at sticking to them because a lot of the time I'll set myself a TBR and then a review opportunity will present itself or I'll buy a new book and I'm so excited to read it that my whole TBR crumbles so it's nice to have that organization but I'm just not the best at sticking to it. Okay so question number two and I'm conscious that I have already answered this but do you set TBRs and do you stick to them so yes just to reiterate occasionally I will set the odd TBR but no, I rarely tend to stick to them. Like I said, it does give my reading a sense of structure and organisation, which I like. But the likelihood that I'll actually stick to it, well, that's another matter entirely. Question number three is, do books affect you emotionally? And again, yes, they do affect me emotionally. I've read several books that have triggered some sort of emotional response out of me so I've read books that have made me angry, I've read books that have made me happy, I've read books that have made me laugh, that have made me sad. You know I feel like if it's a well written book and I identify with the book in some way or I connect to it in some way then it's more likely than not going to trigger some sort of emotional response from me. Question number four is when you're feeling sad, do you like to read sad, happy or neutral books? So with this question, when I'm in that state of being where I'm sad or upset or whatever, I rarely tend to read. I'm more likely going to watch something, particularly of the sappy K-drama soap opera variety. <laughs> I feel like if I were to read something I'd more likely listen to an audiobook as opposed to reading a physical book because I think that it requires a lot more concentration to read a physical book so it would be easier just to listen to an audiobook or like I said just you know Netflix and chill. Question number five is most often do you use reading to escape, learn or critically reflect? Personally, I feel like I use reading to do all three of those. I use reading to escape, learn and critically reflect. I feel like uh, because of all the different types of genres of books that I read, I'm able to do all of these things. So I might read fantasy for the escapism and then I might read uh, a genre like non-fiction in order to critically reflect and engage with societal issues that are affecting people in the world today but at the same time I am also conscious of the fact that you can critically engage with fiction for example you might even be able to critically engage with fantasy but primarily I feel like I read for the escapism however I also do acknowledge the fact that reading 
also has a much far-reaching effect as well. Question number six is what is a book that made you laugh out loud? For that the book that I have chosen is This Is Going To Hurt by Adam Kay. I have spoken about this book previously on my channel way 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 back when but in any case this book is incredibly funny. It had me in absolute hysterics and the interesting thing about this book is that it's a book that's it's a very serious book it's not supposed to be funny but it is so this book is actually a non-fiction book and it's told from the perspective of a former junior doctor who used to work for the British NHS namely Adam Kay and through a series of diary entries we read about his experience working for the NHS what it was like the types of patients that he used to meet it's incredibly funny but it's also very serious as well because from this book we learn about the state that the NHS in Britain is in. This book was written pre-Covid and it still very much applies today. What it um, specifically alludes to is the underfunding that translates in a lack of staffing and the immense uh, strain and pressure that this puts on doctors and nurses who work for the NHS and how this strain even transcends their jobs and affects their personal lives. And Adam Kay, uh, he speaks about how it affected him personally, how it affected his personal relationships. Um, so it's a very serious book. It handles some important issues and it's still very much relevant today, even though it was written before COVID happened. Uh, because if we look at the situation with COVID, it's putting an even greater strain on our NHS. So it's an important book in terms of the insight that it provides into the NHS. But some of the anecdotes in this book, I kid you not, you will be laughing your head off. Question number seven is what is a book that made you cry if you don't cry one that moved you? And for that I have chosen the book A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini. So the thing about me is that books rarely ever make me cry. I do emotionally engage with the books that I read but never to the point that I'm actually moved to physical tears. And as yet only one book has managed to make me cry and it is this book. This book is also incredibly topical because of the situation that's happening in Afghanistan right now. It's something very similar to what this book discusses. So in a nutshell, it's set during the Taliban occupation in Afghanistan during the late 90s and early 2000s. And it particularly looks at and talks about um, how violent and dictatorial a regime it was and how it oppressed people during that time, particularly Afghanistan's most vulnerable groups, women and children. And within that setting, we follow the story of two female main characters, Mariam and Layla, and the bond that grew between these two women was just so heartening. It was really touching to read about the bond of friendship that they shared. There's also this mother-daughter dynamic between them, which was really moving as well. Everything about it was just so touching the way that they supported each other and also the fact that this book ends on quite a hopeful tone as well and um, so despite all the carnage and you know all the suffering that has been inflicted upon Afghani people as a result of this leadership it ends with the hope of something better so that was really moving as well and I don't know it just really hit me and I ended up crying I actually posted about this book recently on my Instagram and someone made a really interesting point about the way this book is written. I'd have to reread it in order to validate what that person said but they basically mentioned the fact that this book is written from a very westernized perspective. It is written by an Afghani, Khaled Hosseini, who is originally from Afghanistan but he sought refuge in the US and he also has a foundation that seeks to help people who have been affected by war, lack of education and you know different afflictions like that. Um, in any case they mention that this book is written from a very heavily westernized uh, view that in essence kind of justifies the US invasion into Afghanistan. It was really interesting, I just thought I'd mention it just in case you've not read this book and you'd like to know. But yes, I just thought it was a really interesting point that they raised. So I would like to read this book again more critically just to see if I can pick up on some of those things that that person mentioned. But otherwise, an extremely moving, heartening story that 
actually made me cry. The next question is, what is a book you didn't even know how you felt about after? So when I initially read this question, I was a bit confused as to what it meant, but the more I thought about it, I thought maybe the best answer to that question was this book, Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. So the reason why I've gone with this book is because when I finished reading it, I felt completely overwhelmed and disoriented and my thoughts were kind of disjointed and all over the place. It just really had that effect on me. Um, basically, to tell you a little bit about the plot, we follow the main character, Natsuki. I'm assuming she's autistic, but it's not explicitly said in this book, so I'm not entirely sure. And she also suffers a lot of abuse because of it as well. By the way, it's important to note that if you do plan to read this book, then I would definitely implore you to check trigger warnings because there are a lot of them. In any case, the only way that Natsuki can escape the suffering of her daily life is when her family take their yearly trip to visit the rest of the family in the Nagano mountains and she can meet up with her cousin Yu and they have this incredibly close relationship, this very close bond that continues into adulthood. So I won't go much further than that with the plot but all I can say about this book is I did enjoy it, I applaud the originality, I applaud the unconventionality, I liked the novelty about this book and if you enjoy contemporary stories that are very different and unconventional then I would recommend giving this a chance but like I said just to reiterate trigger warnings um, but yeah there are some things that happen in this book that are just so overwhelming especially towards the end where the the plot just takes a shift and things suddenly become extremely dark so yeah that's the reason why I chose this book as a book that when I finished it I didn't even know how I felt about it because I finished reading it and it was like what the fuck? Question number nine is are you more likely to read on a sunny or cloudy day and quite simply it doesn't matter to me I will read whatever the weather rain or shine sunny or cloudy it doesn't matter I am always generally I can always be found reading uh, the next question is, do you usually set the mood when you read music, lights, smells, etc? This is something that I used to do, you know, way, way back at the beginning. Let me just define the beginning for you. So back when I initially started my blog, uh, lochanreads.com, uh, which I started back in 2017 or, you know, an age ago. Uh, so back then I was really into bookish candles and all that paraphernalia. But nowadays I don't really care much for that stuff. Of course I want to be comfortable when I read, um, but you know, nowadays that just involves a book and a glass of wine. So I don't really go much for the bells and whistles. But you know, I do appreciate that once in a while it's nice to indulge. And the last question is, can you leap from book to book or do you need buffer time in between? Um, so with this one, I really don't need buffer time in between. I'm happy just finishing a book today and picking up another book today within, you know, a few moments of finishing the last book. I don't really feel like I need that time in the middle, that space. The only reason why I would use that buffer time in the middle is if I'm writing a review and I need to pull together my thoughts from the previous book before I start my next book, then I might you know um, have a buffer time in the middle but generally I don't I'm more than happy just to read one book straight after the other it's Lois from the future here to interrupt this broadcast hey everyone just jumping on quickly because I completely forgot to tag some other booktubers to participate in this tag so apologies for that in any case this is just a quick announcement to let you know that if you would like to take part in this tag then please do consider yourself tagged by me and I look forward to seeing all your videos but for now I will get on with the rest of the video and speak to you guys soon and those are all my answers if you made it this far thank you so much for watching to the end if you like this video please do give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more bookish content let me know in the comments what your thoughts were on any of the books uh, featured in today's video if you've read any of them but that's all for today's video thanks again for watching if you'd like to read more of my book reviews and blog posts do check out my website lochanreads.com you can also follow me on social media i will add all my links in the description box below but for now it's been great talking to you and i will see you all in another video bye